is Emma. Today I'm going to be talking about witchcraft. A lot of Christians don't actually know that they're partaking in witchcraft, new age, paganism, and other occultic practices. Some may realize the seriousness of what they're doing and others may not. It's really dangerous on your faith walk with Jesus Christ if you are partaking in witchcraft. I want to preface before we begin, this is in no way, shape or form coming from a place of self-righteousness. Definitely not coming from an I'm better than you stance. If you have done these things or are doing these things, I also want to say that it is only through grace by faith we are saved through Jesus Christ's sacrifice to atone for our sins. I also want to say, if you sometimes see me looking to the side, it's because I have notes written up because there's so many things that I want to say and I want to make sure I hit them on the head properly and not forget anything. Some of the things that I'm going to be discussing are going to be triggering for Christians included, but I'm only delivering the message that the Holy Spirit has placed on my heart. So, yeah. That being said, we should get into it now. The first thing I want to talk about is idol worship. Now, idol worship looks different to what it was back in the time of Moses. I mean, sometimes it can be where people do literally pray to images, to graven images, statues, all of that. Idol worship is a part of witchcraft. All walks of faith have their items of idolatry, including Christianity. This is literally anything where you're placing its value above what it actually is. That's idol worship. You're, yeah, you're giving it a status above than what it deserves or what it actually is. And I was talking about graven images with Christianity. This includes images of Jesus Christ. Stop worshipping these images. It is perverting and twisting Christian faith to include paganistic principles. And white Jesus that's depicted on a lot of these images isn't even how Jesus is described in the Bible. It's not even biblical. You don't need to add all of these extra things to further claim or solidify your faith, to strengthen your faith, make your prayers seem more powerful, or that these materialistic things are going to get you closer to God, because they're not. The only power necessary and what matters is the power that we get through the Holy Spirit from Jesus Christ. Not doing or adding these additional things to gain favor, make us more righteous, or make us seem more Christian. So this is crosses that people pray to, rosary beads, crosses that you wear like necklaces, wall hangings. Jesus never said that this was, doing those things was like a vital part of practicing our faith, to being obedient towards him. He never told us to represent our faith in that way, that it's not like a must-do thing or you're more favorable if you do. That includes getting tattoos as well, graven images. He never said, go get a tattoo of a cross, go get a Bible verse inscripted on you. He never said, bow down to a cross, a statue or a drawing of me, holding onto an object and believing in it having power is considered idol worshipping. And I was convicted of this. I had things that made me appear or seem more holy because I had them in my house, because I had them in my room, because I would wear them. I was putting their value higher than what they actually were. They're just objects. They don't hold power. Jesus is the only one who holds power. For example, it doesn't give or provide extra favor to you as a Christian. It doesn't hold power. It doesn't 
emphasizing things above Jesus, making them more important to the point I would put them on my body. We are not called to inscript things on our body. We are not called to represent Jesus that way because things like that are derived from bright from pagan practices and Christians have adopted and incorporated these pagan practices into our faith into our spirituality so that's why there's a lot of like so there is no condemnation but we are not called to do that Holy Spirit has shown me the error in my ways and has placed it on my heart to share this with other people to the ears that are willing to hear so that no one else is deceived like I was. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 64 and it says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And I'm also going to call out another verse from Deuteronomy, which is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 27 to 28. And it says, And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. So all of these things that we have adopted into our Christian faith, it's not biblical. We are called to display it in other ways, to our actions, to our behaviors. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about that side of idol worship, which is a part of witchcraft. Also, having a favored celebrity is idol worship too. You're putting a normal sinful human being on a pedestal that they don't deserve. They have the exact same sinful fallen nature as you and I, both of us. And really, our only celebrity should be Jesus Christ. Don't choose to stay ignorant because you're comfortable in your sin or people will think you're a freak if you don't have a favorite celebrity or you don't follow them on social media or know what they're doing or their latest whatever like thinking that it's harmless is dangerous and foolish because it's idol worship and this is not coming from a place of self-righteousness this is just coming from a place of love concern because so many people today including christians are being completely blindsided by this modern idol worship I want Christians and non-Christians, all of us, to be delivered from, this de from these deceptions that I was stuck into. I'm going to call out another few verses. This is Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 to 5. And it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me praying to ancestors as well is witchcraft idol worship it is placing trust and praying to a person just like you and me. The evil eye, yin yang, crystals and sage. Now, I've touched on a couple of these things in my other video, which is evil symbols. All of these things that I've said that are supposed to protect you from bad energies is just completely counterproductive because you're actually attracting the bad energy, the demons, call them for what they are, they're demons, the devil wants you to worship and put your trust in creation and not the creator, all of these things like the sage, the evil eye, the yin yang, the crystals, they are all beacons in the 
the spiritual realm because the demons can see what you decide to place your trust in if it's anything other than the most high god then you're a target they laugh and exploit you and mess with you the spiritual realm is real it is no joke having these objects in your homes partaking and trusting in this witchcraft is opening doors to demons this one i don't think is talked about too much because it has been adopted into modern medicine super common now in western society too and it's acupuncture acupuncture is witchcraft so acupuncture is a traditional chinese treatment for pain relief using needles it is a spiritual and physical practice from the philosophy taoism promotes that everything has power and energy from the universe that needs to be in line with the natural order of the universe acupuncture with the needle restores this energy flow which they call chi it's literally written that needles hold the spirit that helps align this energy flow and relating back to the chi i also want to talk about martial arts kung fu tai chi yoga all of this physical exercise these practices are demonic it is witchcraft they all refer back to chi using energy and they all derive from hinduism buddhism taoism it isn't just physical exercise you are opening doorways and gateways and portals for demons to receive influence over your mind and lead you further away from christ so if you are a christian that is practicing these things whether you knowingly and willingly participating in the spirituality part of these practices it doesn't matter just because you may not be practicing a part of it doesn't mean that you're not still being influenced it's unbiblical period some of the positions that you may be put in and some of the physical actions too are actually performed to worship certain gods and goddesses certain demons yoga has just completely exploded over the western world over the new age movement because it is witchcraft weed mdma acid just drugs in general is witchcraft as i've talked about in a separate video dedicated solely to the dangers of marijuana you are opening doors to demons to start messing with you as they once did for me so it's very real i've experienced it i also know other people who have experienced this demonic influence as well it's manipulating and altering a state of mind your sense of reality warping not only your physical but your spiritual vision as well you're no longer sober you are in danger of being demonically tormented and it says specific explicitly in the bible that we are to be sober-minded because our enemy prowls around like a roaring lion waiting to devour us so we need to be vigilant if you use partake or it's even dangerous if you own any of these horoscopes astrology chakras auras spirit guides light beings astral projecting tarot cards talismans ouija boards and just other new age objects i've just listed the most popular ones that came to my mind um but yeah all of this new age stuff is just straight demonic it is evil it just comes across as so alluring it's how the devil sucks you in you are in bondage and you are in a covenant with the spirit of divination also i want to say that if you have family members or ancestors in the past that partook in the occult who were psychics who were into divination all of that you will most likely be drawn to things of the occult you will probably have a leaning interest or strange fascination for those kinds of things and that's how the generational curse continues especially with divination you need to rebuke it in jesus name whether it's just starting out as a fascination 
that you've been practicing, you need to rebuke it, throw it out, cast it away from you in Jesus' name. With witchcraft, just like a sexual temptation, God doesn't tell you to fight it. He tells you to run. He wants you to run from it, get rid of it, throw it out, rebuke it. What is even scarier is because it has become so normalized, people don't realize the very real dangers that come with messing with it. Yeah, the only power we can receive, the only pure power, is through Jesus Christ. The only real, authentic power. This next thing I want to talk about is so normalized. I know that it's all becoming really normalized because we are in the end times, but this is crazy. It's manipulation tactics. This isn't just like hypnotism and psychic readings and superstition, fortune cookies, palm readings, not just that. That definitely is witchcraft. But I'm talking about like the everyday kind of manipulation. That is witchcraft. So what kind of things I'm talking about? I have a little list. So the kind of manipulation I'm talking about is like the femme fatale movement. Seduction, domination and obsession techniques such as gaslighting, projection, love bombing, all of these actions and behavioral patterns are demonic and they come from the Jezebel spirit, the spirit of witchcraft and manipulation, whether you realize it or not. When or if you are manipulating someone or a scenario, you are actually using spirits or much rather allowing spirits to use you other than the Holy Spirit to dominate, control and get the outcome that they want. Unfortunately, what is really scary, some of the worst acts of witchcraft, some of the worst acts of manipulation are done in the church. It's not always seances, speaking to the dead. Witchcraft is so deceptive. It takes so many forms. I mean, you may not even be realizing that you are engaging and partaking and entertaining that you are even falling into the witch and warlock category because you are a manipulative person, whether you want to admit it or not. They are deceptive and they themselves are being deceived. Controlling behaviors and circumstances at the expense of others to get what you want. Injecting words and emotions or circumstances into the lives of other people to control their behavior, their response. You have no right to having authority over. It's rebellion and assuming authority is witchcraft. If it is not aligning with biblical principles, it is witchcraft. A conversation I literally had with a family member the other day and I'm using dream catchers as an example because that's what we were talking about. So she had a dream catcher said that she knew that it was a part of new age. She knew that it was a, a part of witchcraft. She herself didn't see the dream catcher as a bad thing because she didn't practice witchcraft anymore because she didn't because her faith was in Jesus, so there's no problem in even having it right. Like, it just looks pretty wrong. You can't pick or choose, include or exclude what you believe or want to believe is harmful or not. Especially with things that are not biblical. It either is or it isn't, period. And if you think that it doesn't have an effect on you, you are playing a very dangerous game of ignorance. You have no idea what's happened with these dream catchers before you got them. They could have curses placed on them. The fact that they are an item of witchcraft means they have, they are demonically linked. So yeah, even possessing these items, not even doing anything with them, is giving power and authority and legal rights over to the demons associated with these objects. I want to say that when you are living in sin, when you are playing out exactly how Satan wants you to, he 
to be 
us about fallen nature of man and the success Satan has had in planting those lies that serving yourself will provide the most gratification and power and self-fulfillment. But we as humans have a shape and mindset. We have a shape like nature. We have to follow something. We need guidance. We need direction and authority in our lives or else we are so lost. We are in so much trouble. This is why it is just so important to be spiritually led by the Holy Spirit. To allow the Lord to guide you. For only Him to provide revelation and comfort and guidance. Not the carnal things of this world. Not the deception and lies of witchcraft of these new age practices. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 to 12. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do those things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. If you've watched to the end of this, thank you for listening. I pray that you all seek guidance from Jesus Christ, from 